Hi, welcome to Aussie Kicks. On today's show, well, we're back working on the Blazing Star. Now, I've done two videos already on this one. I did the unboxing video and I did a detailed chassis build, getting all the vintage electronics in it, as you see it now. Now, in this video, the plan is to finish off the body, get the paint on it, cut out all the decals and fit them to call this one done, as this one is going off to one of you. Yes, I'm raffling this one off. If you haven't seen the previous videos, I'll put a link up here, go check them out. Also, if you'd like to be in with the chance to win this I'll put a link in the description go check it out over there right so the first thing I've already done is I cut out the actual body didn't take very long very simple this one and now I've got to clean it up then I have to make up my own window mask so I'll show you how I do that just it's a little tip of how to make life a lot easier for you and then we'll paint up the body now it's all one color so it's not going to take too long and I'm going to do PS16 which is the box art colour as this one is obviously going to one of you. The decals don't look to be too difficult. There's a few joins that you've got to work with and I think the hardest one is probably going to be the actual rear spoiler as it's got these two big stickers that go over the whole thing and then there's like a drop down which is going to be a little bit more of a faff to get the writing lined up so i can see that one being a bit of a pain but we'll work it out when we get to it right let's take it off give it a clean and then paint it up so I've covered this a million times, but give it a good wash. Don't just paint it straight away, especially these old vintage bodies. They pick up a lot of contaminants and a lot of dirt and grime in them. So a bit of washing up liquid, good clean, good dry. Make sure you get rid of all the water before you move forward. Otherwise, that's going to really ruin your day. Now, as this didn't come with any window masks, I'm going to have to make some. So it's simple enough to do. Just get a bit of masking tape, use your fingernail, push it into all the edges. And then after that, get a pen, go around the edges as best you can and then cut it out. Then you can use that as a window mask on the other side, on the inside. Now, modern bodies come with a protective film over the top of them to stop the overspray. So when you take the wind mask off, be gentle. Don't yank it too much. Otherwise, you could unsettle the protective film and then you're going to have to clean up afterwards if you've pulled half of it off. Now, luckily on this body, there's only really three windows, but there is actually a window at the back. Now, in the manual, it doesn't say anything about masking that off. But if you wanted to, you can mask off that fourth window, which is at the back of the body, and then have that as a separate window. As this is going to go to somebody else, I did it as per the manual. Also trying to keep it box art as best as I can. Now we've done all the masking and the cleaning, we can start laying down some paint. So this is one layer of paint that I put down. Now this is about three layers. This metallic blue goes down lovely, but I wanna put some white behind it. So I happen to have some of this kicking around. So I laid that down just to fill it in as this blue can be a little bit see-through, even if you start putting down four or five layers. There you go, it's all looking lovely. No blemishes, no issues at all. Now I'm glad we didn't get any fisheye issues with the paint. Sometimes that happens with the older bodies. Now we turn our attentions to the decals and I'm gonna start with what I think is gonna be the most difficult one and that's getting these stickers on the wing. They're quite large and there's no margin for error. So I started on the back and I fitted it and then I bent it over. Then I took this decal and then I trimmed it so I could butt it up. And then I removed the bottom section so it would stick first. Then I would just pull off the backing and then lay it down. It worked pretty well, but there's very little margin for error in that one. So you've got to be really careful. You don't want any excess because the excess is see-through. And when you lay it down, it will actually give you gaps. As for the other decals that you see here, they weren't too difficult. The overlay of the silver one, there's plenty of extra there to overlay it, so it's not too much of an issue. Getting it round the front to be true is reasonably easy, as you've got the hole as your guide and then that sort of dip part. But all in all, it came together really nicely. I'm really happy with it, and it screams vintage. It's nice to be able to experience another vintage build and one that would have gone nicely with other chassis in the family, but maybe next time. <laughs> So after a good few hours, I have it all finished. And yes, it is classic Tamiya, screams vintage retro stuff. 
I uh, managed to find the bar in my Falcon parts bin. So I've now got the mechanical speed controller bar that goes across to the servo. So it all looks as it should inside. Painting up the body while well, being the blue, super easy. Obviously you've got to create your own window mask. So that's something you've got to be careful of. One tip if you're going to be doing any body like this, whether it's the Terra Conqueror or this one, when you do your window masks, Tamiya gave you window masks that only just cover the window. So when you make your own and you cut them out, cut them a fraction shorter. Don't make them too big, otherwise you've got to go back and fill in. So that would be a tip. The other tip that I would have if you've got a vintage one like this, put a bit of masking tape over this section so you won't blow through. These bodies, being vintage, don't have a cover on them, so you've got to spend time getting it all off. And every time you look at it, there's a little bit more you missed and you have to keep going back. So that was a bit of a faff. Doing the body underneath in white, and I just left the rear spoiler the same as getting paint up into these sections does take a lot of effort but you've got to be a bit careful because it might look perfectly fine, but then if you back it with another color, it can show up and ruin it. So I just left that one. Not that this is going to be running around a track or anything. This is probably just going to end up living on a shelf. Some of the decals to watch out for, the ones that I had lots of trouble with was these little triangles down here. Getting the curve and getting them nice and level, that was a little bit tricky. Don't know why, just seem to be, the rest seem to go on really well, no trouble there at all. Um, the 15 I put on an angle purely because it just looked a bit better. Everything's kind of on angles. So I decided to change it slightly from box art. But apart from that, when you put these lettering in, be really careful. You don't want to be going over. I don't know if you can see on this side, I'm very close. This side, I'm a little bit further away. So when you line it up, just be careful not to go too far this way. I did the windows with the water technique as the windows decals are really hard to get all the air out of. So I dipped them and then I put them on, dried them and then blew them in so that they come out nice and even all the way around. And I love the blue. The tires, <laughs> the tires are really funny. It's such a strange decision for Tamiya to do that but uh, I think it gives it character. And after building so many cars, having cars that are a little bit different, a little bit quirky, makes it a bit more interesting for me. So yeah, love to keep this one on the, in the collection, but I can't keep saying that because I'm collecting more and more and more and I've just run out of space. If you would like to be in with a chance to win this beauty, it comes with free shipping worldwide. Then you can pick up your ticket. I'll put a link below. For the price of a coffee these days, you could have this a few dollars, a few pounds, a few euros, and uh, you can have it in your collection. And I'll just be really jealous because I don't think I'm going to find another one. So I know what you're thinking. This video is a little bit short. Well, yeah. So I'm going to tap on something else that's just arrived that I think you're going to like. I managed to find something pretty rare and hard to find new in box. And it's this an FF01 from Tamiya on the Ford Mondeo body set. Yes, a new in box one. If you know about these, you'll realize they're hard to get hold of. And also once you drive them, the bodies get damaged very easily. So I am super chuffed to get this one on the show as there's a big following for this. Now this is an FF01, which means that the motor is right over the front. Now I actually have one of these chassis. I think it's in black and then this is in gray or vice versa. So I'm looking forward to building this up on the show. Now, now this came out in 1994, I think it was, and ran to 1996. So in a future video, you'll see this one unboxed and then we're going to build it up. I'm really looking forward to adding this one to the collection as it's not that easy to find. Don't forget to like and subscribe as there's tons more content coming really soon. Just to give you another little spoiler, there is something coming very special from a little company like this. If you'd like to know more, you'll have to like and subscribe or maybe do a bit of Googling. We just have to wait and see. Thanks very much. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.